Hello, BOD people. Okay, let's uh, let's see. What we've got here is a .NET uh, project that I've um, published on NuGet, which lets you version uh, your .NET projects. So inside of a um, CS proj file, which is a project file which contains information about your .NET project, or rather your C sharp project specifically. Um, you've got let's see where is it uh, edits um, uh, yes that one so it's an it's an XML file that it explains some of the um, details about your project it's like a kind of like a package to JSON for example for example so we've got some some package references which are uh, dependencies. And then we've got some information about the package itself, its version, etc., etc. And uh, what this tool does is that it goes into your uh, CS proj file and it updates this version number according to your input. So it might bump the major, minor, or patch versions. You can bump uh, it to a alpha, beta, or release candidate. And if you you can specify bump my version by one minor, and it will bump and, and it will parse the version number, bump the right number, and then write it back to the file for you automatically. So the use case would probably uh, most likely be something like an automated build, like a CI system, where you want to automatically set the version number based on some criteria. Maybe bump it for every build. Maybe you have some kind of input that gives you the version number and you want to set the specified specifically, which is also possible. And um, yeah, that's basically what, what you would use it for. If you've used Yarn in the Node environment or Node um, community, uh, it has a, has a command called, I think it's just Yarn version or something. Anyway, this is ba basically this that for this for the net. So this is that for the net. <laughs> anyway, uh, I have been some issues which have been submitted to the um, to the um, the GitHub repo. So I thought we'd take a look at those. So. <clears throat> Uh, this was opened over a year ago, <laughs> um, but apparently the Git version prefix option is not working as it should. Uh, so I thought we'd give it a stab and, and try to fix that issue. Uh, I haven't looked at this code in over a year, almost one and a half years. What was it? Um, my previous commit was the 26th of May. So we're basically coming up. Tomorrow, it's one and a half years ago. So, yeah, I haven't done much work on this lately. But um, that won't stop us now, now that I have a bit, uh, bit of time left over to work on this. So I just, uh, last time I tried to work on this, I spent like half an hour just trying to get .NET set up and working again because I, apparently I didn't have it set up on this computer. And... <laughs> And um, I haven't used .NET actively or like uh, daily in almost a year. So I was kind of trying to get back into the, the groove. But I think we're there now. I also managed to run the tests before I started the stream. So at least I know those work. So if we give it a second here, it should spin up and run all the tests, excluding this one, which is skipped because there's no automated way to check the version number yet. <laughs> I, I assume that I thought at some point I might, I might be able to do this. I quickly looked at the code and I, I don't really know what's what's the problem. So I didn't investigate anymore and more deeply in that. So uh, the, what's it called? The git version, dash dash git version prefix. So when you bump the version, it can the tool will also automatically commit the change for you uh, using uh, 
git install on the machine, so it assumes that it's able to launch a tool uh, or a, a, um, a command called git um, by, by trying to locate it in your path, uh, which you're able to skip if you don't want to use it. Uh, let's see, scroll past all this. Uh, let's move this panel. So, scrolling past all this, this is all the logic for setting the version number. Uh, if it's still null, we we actually ask you what kind of uh, what the version number you want it to be. So we print first like the 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 current version, and then you are able to either specify a specific version or bump it if you uh, if you want to just bump it automatically. You're able to do that do that, and if you do, not, do none of those, we actually prompt you. Which is running. What what's what, what's the new version? Right. We'll write the file, and if they haven't disabled Git, we go in here. We grab the project file path. We create the tag. So this is where where we set the Git version prefix. So this is read in through one of the options. So I'm going to assume that this is what's causing problems. Uh, then we try to start git commit with the message, which is either the commit message, which, uh, which you can specify, or just uh, the same as the tag. Um, redirect those, wait for exit. If you don't want to, uh, if you haven't disabled the git tagging, we also try to tag the commit after committing to make sure we tag the right one. We ignore <laughs> ignore all the um, errors and do, 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 do. not running git integration, not running git integration where the project file has been specified to prevent running git in the wrong directory. Oh yeah, that was a problem that I had. <laughs> came across uh, one solution there could prob mm, uh, I'm guessing that we could probably change the working directory to the parent directory of the project file or the, the, the directory that the project file is present in and in doing that, we should probably be in the correct directory. It, it is a bit sneaky, considering that we're, we'll be changing where we run co uh, run different commands, and that might be not what the user expects. Um, may, maybe we, we could prompt in that case and say, uh, you, you want to run git in this, this directory? For example. Sorry. Wow. I'm not really sure why I'm yawning. Uh, yeah, those are not relevant now. So what we're going to do is going to have a look at that git prefix thing. Sup? Well, uh, not much. Oh, right. First time chat. Cool. That is a cool feature. <laughs> well, not much. Working on .NET. Oh, click to reply. Oh, there's a reply feature too. I, I haven't used Twitch that much, and not even, especially not chat. <laughs> not very often people come come by and and chat while I'm streaming. So let's see. But yeah, not not, not much is up, I guess. Um, Trying, trying to do some C sharp programming, which I haven't done. Yeah, .NET and C sharp. Haven't done this for, uh, for quite a while. <laughs> so, let's see. This apparently this option is not working as it should. So by the <laughs> well, today's the day, sir. Well, yes. <laughs> I haven't. Um, I've been doing like uh, uh, Python programming mostly for the past uh, the, the 10, 11 months. So my head's kind of in dynamic. I'm not gonna say hell, but 
dynamic land, let's call it that. So according to the issue, trying to use the option git version prefix with the tool version 1.1.2. Well, that's an old version. So what do you program? What do the program makes you do stuff? So what do the program makes you do stuff? I'm not really sure I, <laughs> I understand the question. The, the, if you're asking what this tool does, is it, um, it will help you um, set the version of your project. So inside of the, uh, that was not the right project file. Ashi uh, left the scripts. I only know how I can try my PC. Yeah, Well, English isn't everyone's first language. Um, mine neither, so. Eh. <laughs> yeah, I was meaning what does it do? Yeah, yeah, sure. So what it does is, um, this is a this is a project file of a C sharp project. It's kind of like uh, package.json. And inside of here, oh, blah, uh, you've got a version number, and this tool lets you change the version number by specifying if you, uh, if you want to bump it, bump the major version, the minor version, the patch number, uh, the alpha, beta, or release candidate, and etc. etc. Need chat and send them these lessons. <laughs> hey, well, we understand each other well now, so don't don't um, don't uh, sweat it. So, 1.1.2, that's a quite an old version though. Let's see, I'm just gonna have a look in the Git repo. Back when, oh, sorry, uh, when those versions, blah, blah, blah. What was it, uh, one? One point one point two point zero. So uh, let's see. Use for parsing. Uh, yeah, add file to ownership current version. Add new thing punctuation. Add directory path from the native local project file. Yeah, I don't see anything that so kind of like FTTT FTTT. Um, I think no. <laughs> Reset version. Oh. Pre release. Huh. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like I've mentioned anything regarding the, the version prefix thingy in my commit messages. Oh, like if. Uh, no, not really. Um. This is basically just for bumping the version of your uh, of your project file, basically typically like in a CI build, for example, when you have automated builds going, and you want to bump the version every time you build it, for example. Uh, let's see, do I have a test which tests the Git stuff? I kind of assume I do not. Do 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 do. Yeah, none of the Git stuff is tested. Uh, I'd say, logically enough. What's up with these? Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
nothing important. Uh, let's see, how do we best test this? I think we just need to run like the tool and to see the results, I guess. Hmm. Uh, So what we'll do is we'll go in here and edit the configurations uh, for this one. Then the new sure must be a professor. <laughs> uh, let's see, program arguments. Uh, get version prefix. So in theory, we could say that this should be test uh, version. Yeah. Okay, so we do that. Uh, by default, let's have a look in here. <clears throat> by default, this is not set. Do we set it to anything? No. So it is null by default. Okay. Let's try just bumping like the minor version first. And how long uh, and how long does it take to make all the scripts? How long it takes? It might be a DOS because of the, the dark gray color palette. How long it takes to make all the scripts? Huh. As long as it takes, I guess. Let's see what, it, what happens. Unable to find a project in directory, whatchamacallit. Okay, that makes sense. So let's go back here and change the working directory to this one. And let's run it again. Now the, uh, the whole windows. Oh, like these maybe? Current version 1.5, new version 1.6, successfully set version 1.6. Did it run the git stuff though? Doesn't seem like it. Right, now let's see what happens in the repo. Yeah, it did. Okay, so it bumped it and it set the version to 1.6. So that's right. Um, you can't see it on the screen, but I, off screen I've confirmed that it did the right thing. <laughs> Uh, so let's try to set the version prefix. Git version prefix, set that to version, like so. Run it again. Oh, the blue screen, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, a theme uh, called um, Night Owl. Uh, which um, which is optimized for the best uh, the, or high, highest possible contrast without being like black and white, which is actually not that good to read. So <clears throat> it's supposed to give you very high um, contrast to make it easier to read. And I, I, I'm really partial to it. So, yeah. No, it works for me. Might be that the, this Git issue is out of date. Uh, it seems like he, they've tried like an old old version anyways. Yeah. I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna call that a, um, uh, let's see, where is it? Where's the reset thingy?
There we go. Uh, yep. Yeah. And let's do a hard one. And we're also going to delete the new tags. Delete the version seven tag. And we're going to do six tag. Right, we'll do six. There we go. Okay. That reminds me. Why was there a blue or yellow or green? Ah, the way the text this is a different colors. Uh, it just signifies different kinds of. Um, hmm, how how should I put it? Um, it, it, it the text has different meanings. So, for example, this is a a class uh, in C sharp. So, it has a separate color. Uh, function calls have a separate color. So it's easy to see. Uh, this is a function call. This is just a, a local variable. <clears throat> this is a property of that variable. Uh, yeah. Slowly, I can tell him a new because you have questions about the colors and stuff instead of the program. <laughs> well, that's fine. Uh, we we all got to start somewhere. So if you're if you have interest for uh, to learn programming, sure, ask ask all the questions you want. Um, I, I I don't mind. And um, how else are you going to learn if you're, if you're not willing to ask questions? <clears throat> Okay, so the the thing seems fine. So I'm just gonna close this issue. Uh, 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 not able to reproduce in version one point ten point oh. Please open a new issue if you are still a a back one. To, um, if you still experience this in the most recent version, close with comment. Click. And on a scale of one to ten, how hard is the script you are now working on? Because it looks hardcore. Well, th this is pretty simple. Uh, it's just a single file. Um, it has a lot of uh, properties at the top here, and then a bit of code at the bottom here. It's pretty straightforward. The code kind of it executes it just in the same order as you see it. There's no complicated parallel stuff or anything. No concurrency, no parallel parallelism or anything. So this is mostly straightforward. If you start reading at the top, you should probably manage to work your way through it. I won't say fairly easy because easy is such a loaded term, basically. But yeah, it, this is this is pretty simple. It's uh, how many lines of code is this? Uh, Three hundred lines, barely. So not too bad. Might be daunting if you're new to programming, but um, this should be o over. Um, uh, uh, so this this should be surmountable. I wanted to deter you, but but um, everything looks daunting when you when when you're new to it, basically. Uh, yeah. Let's have a look at the other issues. Change the versions of projects in solution. So what's this again? I really like how, how well they've structured their <laughs> their issue. Here's like a header. What should we do or change to make their app better? I would like to change the versions of the project in the same solution. For now, uh, why is it important to you? For now, I would like to change the version for each project one by one with a single command. I would change all the projects. Solution can can be adding a dash r option. We cursively select the current directory. Uh, so you can make a script that it jumps to option A or option B in random inside the script. If you get my point, because you say the script just follow 
the stand way of code, standard way of code. Yeah, well, well, if you're if you're looking into like larger software projects, you you at some point you'll you'll have to kind of navigate through and understand what what piece of code call uh, how do you get to uh, to this piece of code when you start the program. So you kind of have to work your way through all the code and try to figure out how how do I get to this point and where does something break? So when it gets to this point, there's some kind of error that happens and starts to get really complicated and you're trying to figure out how the original author of the code thought when they made it and sometimes it may become obvious with enough um, like spelunking in the code and sometimes you just have to figure out how it works and never understand <laughs> what they were thinking when they wrote the code. Uh, the, the code that I have in this project though is fairly straightforward there is not not many function calls per se there are a couple of helper functions down here but th those are pretty short and the rest of the code is basically linear where you start reading at the top and in the, and the code is executed in the in the order that it's written in the sort in, in the file so that's not necessarily the case for for complex code it's very seldom the, the case for complex code. But in this case, it, for this simple project, it is pretty straightforward. So you just got like, got like a, a long function that you have to read through to understand the whole thing. So if you wanted to get started with something, this could maybe be, uh, this could be a, uh, be a start, I guess. Seeing as it's not, it's not too complicated and it gives a, pretty quick feedback loop where you can just run it and see stuff happen and kind of follow along and see where stuff happens. So <clears throat> let's see. Um, recursive. Mm, looks good, but hard. <laughs> sure. Um, as I said, uh, if you're, if you're new to this, it might, look a bit daunting if you're um once you've once you've get, get, gotten a bit into it it'll look easier i guess <sighs> recursive for a solution i kind of don't want to in implement this it seems I honestly think this is a bit of an edge case. I got to go. Better loan phone. Keep up the good work. Maybe see you around. Sure. Coming out some other time. Um, if you want. Have a good uh, evening, afternoon, morning, whatever, wherever you are. It's evening here, but yeah. See ya. Hmm. So back to the issue. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, <laughs> in in my head, I'm just, f yeah, finding um, excuses for why this is an edge case. Like, who wants to update update all the projects with a different version at the same time? And how do you know that they're all going to be mi minor versions? Yeah, you demand later. later. So, <laughs> so I'm kind of, I'm kind, I'm just trying to um, to um, convince myself and come up with a good enough. Uh, reason why not to implement it but the the fact is I don't think I'm going to implement this um, I would rather um, suggest using a tool for this like xargs which like <clears throat> You could probably do this with XRX pretty easily. Could I try that maybe? Wait a second. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, do, do. This one is also. Can I do this? Yeah. Does this have a version? No. But it could have. So, inside of property group. So, in theory, I could have a version tag in here. 
1.1.0, for example. Yes. And if we bring up the terminal, um, yeah. So we've got a fresh terminal here. Let's just jump to the correct directory first. Uh, .NET version. Right. So we're in here. We've got the solution. So in theory, the solution file has references to all the projects. Uh, don't think we can edit the solution instead of writer, but if we do uh, like this, this contains references to those uh, projects. But as you might be able to see, it's not very obvious. So this is uh, the um, the project references. They, they, yeah, this is not this file format. The pro the solution file format is horrendous to work with as a human. Uh, it's it's meant for compu computers to read and 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 use, and it's very obvious. <laughs> so let's not even spend any time on on trying to make that work. Um, and trying to figure out how that works. Uh, I'm not going to even bother. But what we could do, instead of having the dash R, I think it should be possible to do like a file search where uh, we specify that we want to find csproj files. Uh, how do we do this? Instead of a string, I think. Uh, nope. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, it's a regex. Uh, does it have to be? Uh, oh, what's the um, what's the command here? Find entries in the file system. Yes. File type, but I think file type is specifically like executable and oh, glob. That's the one I want instead of a regular expression. Yes, because I think dash T is uh, file directory, symlink, executable, empty socket, and pipe. Yeah, that's not what I want at all. But yeah, so FD uh, dash G for glob and star dot CS proj. Uh, maybe instead of a string. Yes. So that give me, gives me the two files that I want. Uh, then, in theory, I can do this, pass that into xargs, which will run something for each of the files. So, <laughs> I just have to think about this. Uh, in theory, uh, what is it, dot, dot .net run uh, source .NET version is that how you do it? Nope. Couldn't find a project to run. Okay. Uh, oh right. Uh, we need to specify with dash dash project. Uh, right. So dash dash project. Interesting. Not really sure. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> Unrecognized command or argument. Didn't you just tell me to use prod dash dash project to run it? What? How how do you use that? <laughs> Let's see. Uh, .NET command help. Okay, so .NET run dash dash help. And we should see an option. Okay, let's try the oop. That's better. <clears throat> dash P, the path to up to the project file to run. Default to the current directory if there is only one project. Okay, I thought that was what I was doing. So, 
Okay, let's let's try to just run .NET run project source .NET version .NET version C project. Wait, wait a second. Uh, what was the error that we got up here? Right, right. What, what am I doing? Um, right. So in, with this, we're supposed to skip that, I think, and then it would put that in. How is the syntax again? No, that's not the one. Uh, I think this is how you do it. Let's see. I haven't used XR as much. Uh, right. Okay. So, man. X arcs. Um, let's see any examples. Not really. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Single quotes escape all non single characters. Change the external stuff null, blah, blah, blah. This is input, so different kinds. Hmm. I thought this would be able to do what I want, but it looks like it. It inputs the the argument uh, x args utility argument blah 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 blah. Does it have like a reference to std in? Open std in as a dev tty in the child process before executing the command. Uh, oh, oh, I probably need to run it as an interactive thingy. Okay, that's useful. Um, don't really see what it, oh, that was the only reference it stood in. So in theory, I would probably want to run it with dash, oh, dash O. Also, does that work? No. Um... I was pretty certain I would be able to input read space tab new line end of line delimited strings from the standard input and executes utility with the string uh, strings as arguments. Uh, right. Any arguments specified on the command line are given to utility upon each invocation, followed by some number of the arguments right from the standard input of xargs. This is repeated until standard input is exhausted. Spaces, tabs, new lines may be embedded in arguments using single blah, blah, blah. Uh, single quotes escape all non-single quote characters, excluding new lines. Uh, up to the matching single quote, double quotes escape all non-double quote characters, including new, inclu excluding new lines, up to the blah, blah, blah. Any single character in here, any single backslash. <laughs> uh, Repulster. Replacing one or more uh, occurrences of Repulster in up to replacements or five if no dash R fly, fly is specified. Blah, blah, blah. If that reference and replace the first occurrence of Repulster instead of appending the data. Okay. So if you say x args dash j percent, it will replace that with the input. That's what I want. Okay. Okay. This is helpful. But what is i though? 
execute utility for each input line, replacing one or more occurrences of Refleister in up to replacements. Uh, is that the dash R flag? Specify the maximum number of arguments that I will do replacement in. If replacement is negative, the number of arguments in which replace is unbounded. That would have been nice to have an example of, but okay. <laughs> they, only, they only did for for J. Um, right, but let's try that then. Let's see if we can get this working. This isn't .NET programming either. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, um, let's... Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can run this just like a straight project first. So we can do this, and if we do, 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 do what's the uh, what's the thing? Uh, version show blah 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 dash p or project file. Huh. I wonder if that was intentional on my part. To use the same shortcut as uh, as the .NET tooling does. If not, clever. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this one. So we'll pass in dash p. Um, we'll go to the same thing, like so. Let's see if that works. Okay, it does. Uh, passing in minor, we should just bump it to 1.6. It does. Okay, great, great. So we know that that's working. So if we then change this to use the, where's the glob that we want to use, CS proj, like so, we pass that on to exargs. Uh, then we do a dash J and we say where we put the percent, we're going to do replacement. So this is going to stay, but this one is going to be switched out for this. No, for this. Now let's see if that works. Very exciting. Okay. Unrecognized command or argument. <laughs> and now the interesting thing is, where is it unexpected? <laughs> Specify help for a list of available com uh, options and commands. I very much wish that I knew <laughs> which uh, piece of uh, tooling is actually showing me that message. Um, I think it, oh, that's not what I meant to do. I think it might be .NET. Uh, is it possible to make XRs print the, the stuff you're gonna print? Uh, change, blah, blah, blah. This is expected to be used in concert with the print blah, blah, blah function. Okay, that's not interesting for me. Um, nope, 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 nope. Uh, next in the, uh, no, if I don't know okay. Um, command. This option mo just moves moves where those are going to be, be placed in the commands that are executed. The commands uh, must show up as a distinct argument to X arcs. It will not be recognized if, for instance, it is in the middle of a quoted string. Okay. Furthermore, only if the first occurrence, uh, okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah.
which will start with an uppercase letter in the current directory desk there. Right. So replace. Yeah, okay. That seems. That looks very much like what I want to do. Uh, I just wish. Is there like a verbose flag for this? Uh, doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, call utility for every number and none empty lines. Nope. Set the maximum number of arguments, take one stand input for each invocation of utility. Reopen. Uh, The GNU version of XR runs utility on at least once, even if XR's input is empty and it supports the dash R option to inhibit this behavior. The free BSD version of XR does not run the utility argument on non empty input, on empty input, but it supports the dash R option for the command and compatibility with GNU XRs, but the R option does nothing in the free BSD version of XRs. Wow, nice. Well, it is a, it is uh, uh, um, an issue sometimes. Uh, I guess the the um, Ur example is um, oh man said, which takes next no argument on BSD systems, including Mac, which can be confusing. Uh, oh. Echo the command to be executed to standard error immediately before it is it is executed. That's exactly what I want. <laughs> I knew that there was something like this. Uh, let's just do dash T in here. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Why is it specifying both? What? That doesn't make any sense. What? Wait, what? Huh? Should... Wait, what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's try... Okay, let's just delete all this. Yes, this gives me two separate lines. And according to the man page, it should... Read space to have a new line and end of line delimited strings from the standard input and execute utility with the strings as arguments. Oh, oh. I should probably specify number. Now I'm going to take them for standard for each. The current default value of number is 5,000? <laughs> Why 5,000? <000? Why? laughs> what? Such a bizarre number. Why 5,000? That's strange. My, 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 my first thought, thought is, has, does this have to do with something like, with, with some kind of other Unix tool that has some kind of limitation or it gets bogged down if it has it gets more than 5,000 inputs for some reason. That's so strange. But okay, let's try specifying uh, dash n1. Oh yeah, this very much seems like what I want. It did work! Fantastic! Oh, this is so cool. Nice! And I just now realized I need to find out how find works instead of fd, which I'm using. Um, evaluate an expression composed of the primaries and operands listed below in terms of each file in the tree. Primaries and operands, indeed. Oh, crap. This is... Okay, this is something else. Uh, find... I don't know. Can I just glob this? Is that fine? CSProj. No. 
Uh, do I have to specify like dash R? Nope, that didn't work at all. <laughs> um, oh, I probably need to specify the directory. I'm, I'm, this one? Oh, that works. Um, right. No such file or directory. So yeah, this is, this is why I prefer FD. Okay, so it is a regex. Can I use a glob instead? Let's see, glob, global. Okay, apparently not. Why does it have to be so difficult? Uh, IPath pattern. Like path, but insensitive. Ooh, what does path do? Path, uh, there we go. Uh, yep. Pattern. True if the path name being examined matches pattern. Special shell pattern matching characters. Maybe use as part of pattern. These characters, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this looks like what I want. Find uh, uh, okay. Find help uh, dash F for path. That doesn't look like the thing that I found. Uh, dash path. Okay, what it, what is dash f then? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, what's it say? No, oh, that's that's some kind of bug. Um, why does it? Why does it talk about like a dash F flag and it doesn't list it in here? That's strange. And the F option. Okay. There, are, there is no delimiter of separating options and file names or file names and expression. It is difficult to specify files named dash X dev or bang. These problems are handled by the def, uh, F option and the get opt dash dash construct. Okay. So that's what path is, f dash, uh, dash f path is for. So dash path probably gives me a, a access to the thing that I want. So find dash path. And I want one of these, yes, prod. Started in this directory. This was not the right thing to do. <laughs> Uh, illegal option P. Why do you have P is the option? Wait, what? This makes less and less sense for. Dash path and then a pattern. These characters may be matched. Slashes are treated like a normal character and do not have to be matched explicitly. Okay. Why? Why, <laughs> why is this more difficult than it should be? Okay, let's see. Pattern. Yes, 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 yes. Whole name. Same thing as path. For GNU find compatibility. Ugh. Okay. That's fine. I just wanted to make this work. Um, true if the program named utility returns a zero value. Wait, what? Okay. Name. Name. 
name. True if the last component of the path name being examined matches pattern. Ooh. Special shell pattern, blah, 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 may be used as part of pattern. Okay, this looks like very much like what I want. So, dash name instead. Star.csproj from this file onwards. No, that didn't work either. What? It doesn't recognize. Okay, does it need two dashes, maybe, as I would expect? Um, legal option dash. Wait, what? <laughs> this makes no sense. I how can I not understand how to use this? Am I? <laughs> uh, an expression goes last. It does. Wait, do I have to put like primaries? Okay, so this is a primary thing. Is that the? Is that what it is? So, the the sends the directory for each path listed, evaluating an expression composed of the primaries and operands listed below. Okay, so this the things that I'm using are primaries, which should be specified at the end, which just breaks my. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so by specifying the path here, I'm telling it where to look, and I'm using this primary operand thingy to tell it what to look for. There we go. Bit backwards from what I would expect, but um, it works. So if we combine, combine this with our newfound knowledge of Xargs with um, dash n set to one, then dot net run. So this would actually be dot net version, but dot net run. We specify the project to be source.net version, .net version, uh -huh. then we pass in dash p again. Uh, so if we specify minor like this, and then dash p for project, and then I will put the thing at the end. So we do this, we should get some proper output. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That works. Excellent. Okay. So <laughs> this bit of searching has finally led me to the thing that I wanted to to um to share with this random person on the internet. The fact of the matter is they're most likely using Windows anyway, so they're not going to be able to use this um this tip, but this is what we're going to give them. Um, how do we put this to be uh, polite? I believe this to be out of scope and better solved by existing tools available uh, in combination with um, .NET version. For example, to get this behavior uh, on Unix-like systems, you can run the following command. Uh, three of those shell, I guess. I think that I think that works. Paste that in, <clears throat> and uh, let's switch this out for .NET version. So look at the preview. That looks good. Close with comment. Well, this is an easy way to fix uh, issues. Just close, <laughs> close them with a comment. Well, these issues are quite old, mostly because I didn't look into them when they first were submitted. And um, if they really want these things to be implemented, they could just make. 
Anyway, so this is the thing that prompted me to look into this uh, repo at all, which is someone's having an issue with running the tool because it's targeted towards uh, .NET Core version 2.1. They're using .NET Core version 3.1, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're asking for 3.1. Um, you could get around this. Uh, where are they running this? They don't really say. Echo was not found. This was found. If this is in. Yeah, you're able to install this, but there's like a separate, there's a dedicated like task in DevOps specifically to install .NET versions. So you don't need to actually run this PowerShell thing. You can just, it's called like use.net or something. And you can just specify use 2.1.x and it installs the newest version of 2.1 and then it, that it can find. So that's a solution. But if not, it might, it might, it might override some stuff and uh, which I might give you problems. So the thing is, this was made June last year. Uh, this person, uh, Washington University, St. Louis. Interesting. Commented uh, a couple of weeks ago with a with a workaround. The thing is, though, he, he's suggesting that maybe we should just package it in like a self as a self contained exe, which is not a bad solution. Apart from the fact that kind of my my thought was it was supposed to be installed like a like a like a global tool. But what would be interesting is if I were able to publish it with with support for multiple versions. I don't know if that is possible, but I know that you can specify multiple versions in here. So in theory, I should be able to just say, um, none of these. <laughs> Didn't it? Yeah, here we go. So, like net 5.0. Shouldn't this be like this? And net 6.0. Is that possible? And also, do I need to install a new version of .NET to make this work? I, th I think yes. But the, the thing is, if I do this, does that mean... Oh, first of all, I need to change this to plural. I don't understand why they've made it this way. <laughs> it's such a silly thing. Only one target uh, target framework moniker specified. Oh, only one. Okay. Uh, uh, what, what? Is this multiple? No. Oh, oh. Ah, <laughs> this is such a silly thing. I, I, I can't understand why they kept this. I understand that CS Proj is an, is an evolution of the previous project uh, file format, but why, oh why, did they not deprecate the single, singular one? So you can specify target framework, which specifies a single framework as your target. Then you can specify target frameworks with an S at the end, which lets you specify multiple. Why have both? It's so confusing. <laughs> and it's such a, it was, I remember way back when, when this was first launched and there was quite a few like questions in like uh, some of the Slack channels that I were in. Why is not my multiple, multiple target framework thingy working? And it's very often because you're specifying multiple ones inside of a tag that uh, without the s at the end which means you're only supposed to 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 um, target one 
And it's so confusing, and it's so easy to, to, to just skip by because it, you have to notice that there's an whether or not the S is present. Such a weird thing to keep around. <sighs> just a pet peeve of mine, you might say. Uh, right, I did change a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, you, yeah okay, I'm just going to remove the changes that I made. Reset. Uh, oh, yeah, I never run get. That's fine. Okay, so we change this back to that with an S at the end. We keep the Nakora 3.1 target. We I actually received... Um, might this be the same for a person? No, this is a separate person. But a different person submitted a um, update target framework to 3.1 about a year ago. <laughs> and... Um, uh, no, about a year ago, I say. About more than one and a half years ago. Um, they they actually updated it for me. And I think that I am going to... It does not suggest anything. It's Do I have to do this? No, that doesn't help either. But okay, I'm just going to say that. So there we go. So the question now becomes, am I able to install this both uh, with... .NET Core 3.1 and 5 and 6 just by specifying all these target frameworks? I think yes. But let's give it a try. If we open this, we'll have a look at what version... Oh, what version am I on? 3.1. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, .NET in the tool? Install? No. Done it. Install tool. In install tool. Tool install. Holy crap, I can't remember. Dash dash help. <laughs> tool. Dot net. Uh, come on. Tool help. Then I think it's install. Yes. It's a global tool. A global or local tool. Local tools are added to manifest and restored. Uninstall, update, list, run, and restore. Oh, they have an update command now. I, I say now, but apparently they did have that in 3.1. Uh, let's see. How... I am quite certain there is a way to tell it to install a local package. Isn't there? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hmm. Hmm. Can't see anything at the hmm. I am quite certain there is a way to do this. Uh, .NET tool install uh Local? Mm. From local nuket package, yes. Just this thing. I think you can use global add source path to your path to your is the path to of the folder, not the new package file. Uh, the file name is loaded from the tool name. Okay, so I need to make the NuGet package anyways. But I can install...
Okay. So you are able to install this uh, a local NuGet package if you just specify. <clears throat> Sorry about the bright screen, by the way. <laughs> he says after uh, uh, Okay, you can add it. Blah 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 blah. That's not what I want. But okay, so I am I'm pretty certain this is what I want. Uh, so let's give this a try. Uh, where where did my terminal go? Oh, there we are. I don't I don't know why I didn't see it. Uh, <clears throat> .net tool install. Either have to do add source path to your new get package. Right where the package is actually okay. So first of all, we need to produce the um. Dot net, uh, wait. No, so, so, source dot net version. Let's go in here. Okay, uh, <laughs> I don't remember much of this. Uh, let's see. Do I have added the? No. Okay. So let's start from. Uh, nope. Let me go one level up. Yes. GitHub workflow published to NuGet YAML. This very much just looks like the thing I want. Yes. .NET pack. And that should give me a NuGet push source output. Yes. Okay. That looks like the thing that I want. <clears throat> uh, .NET pack uh, into output, output, uh, output. Uh, oh, right. Um, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Uh, .NET version, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that should produce a NuGet package. Ooh, that's a lot of red text. Not good. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, it's complaining about .NET 5. Okay, that makes sense. The reference assemblies were not found. You might be missing, you might be using older .NET SDK. Uh, blah, 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 update Visual Studio or something. Okay, that makes sense. So if you go back to the uh, clean the jig and just change this back to, yep. So we're now, try, now trying to package this. Let's see if that works. Okay, promising. Yes. Okay, so that produced the package that we wanted. And we should now be able to install it using .NET tool install add source output and it's called dot net version cannot find manifest file blah 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 do I have to specify the whole thing maybe I do manifest 5.0 dot nu pkg without the new package from command nope that didn't help either what was the command am i remember misremembering something dash dash add source path to your new git package file name is loaded from the tool name Let's say you're fine. 
including another computer. Let's see if I'm leaving it to the tools box saying looks at bus. Okay, so you skip everything. Okay, so I should be able to say just this. No? Yes. Dash dash add source. Hmm. Should this be like a like a proper uh, uh what shift I did, oh, oh, I forgot to uh, put the dash G. If I actually just read the, the error message, that should help. <laughs> yeah, this looks much more promising. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so that works. Right. Um, dot net SDK. Tool manager version helper. Oof. Okay, sure, whatever. Uh, let's. Um, oh, that's not how you write that. There we go. Let's download the newest version. That's very easy. What do you mean, just one download button? What's the sorcery? <laughs> okay, here's the runtime in SDK. Here's to how to install it. Here's how to run it on Docker. Why is there no runtime for macOS? Is there just the one option? All.net 6. Okay, here are the SDKs. Here's the runtime. But there isn't. There's an installer. Is that the problem? I don't know. Okay. Yes, I want to build apps. Is this the. No, that's the x64. That's not what I want. Uh, I probably already downloaded. I want the ARM64 one. Yes. Did it download? No. 30 seconds? Wow. That's that's a long time. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> if you're not subscribing to Arcadia, I really recommend it. If you're into D&D, they have top-notch articles every month. Uh, let's just pull this off screen. Blah, blah, blah. Sure. Ugh, not the majority of that one. Mm -hmm. There we go. <clears throat> Plung Lung indeed. Would have been. Okay, so now we've got the right version of .NET installed. Let's have a gander what happens if we run this. That's actually what I expected. Um, now I just have to figure out figure out how to do the the right version. So .NET version up in here, still the three one. Okay. 
Uh, where did it install? Do we know? Uh, let's have a look at. Um, do, do, do. Okay, that's a lot of places, but it looks like, oof, okay, I'll stop now. If we do, actually, just to, use your local share.net.net, okay. So if we do <laughs> show the alphabet set this one yeah okay so if we now go back here run that version yes. Now we're getting the right version. So that was actually not as difficult as I feared it might be. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's try to fix this again. I was complaining because I own a specific one. I can't, can't fathom why they did it like this. It's so annoying. Okay, net 6.0. They finally fixed these things too. Took them a while, but they got there in the end, which is the important part. So, if, oh, now it's complaining about our .NET version in here. Let's see if it figured it out by itself. No, but, but, aha, aha. Ah, you clever banana. Not fully supporting a writer. That's fine. <laughs> You just work. Okay, let's see. So, given this, let's see if we can make this work again. So we've got .NET uh, package. Uh, <laughs> what's the what's the command again? Um, .NET pack dash o and then the link, okay. .NET pack dash O for, uh, just put it in output again. And now we're gonna do source, then a version, then a version sees proj. Let's see if that works. Okay, telemetry, etc. That's fine. That's interesting, it worked on the first try. Always be wary when something works on the first try. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so now the, the question becomes, does it work? Don't a tool install global, uh, upgrade, I think dash G sure, uh, add source output. Um, dot net version. Required command was not provided. Unrecognized command or argument. All of those things. <laughs> Crap, they've changed the stuff. Okay, let's see. What what do we got? We've got dot net tool still. Okay, dot net tool. That should help. Install, I had that, didn't I? Tool, install. Oh, 
Are global tools no longer a thing? Is that it? Okay, let's scroll all the way back here. Somewhere. Does it specify global as a thing here? No. I don't believe it does. Nope. Okay, so it should work, I would assume. Global add source from, no, 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 output. Yes, yes, dot net version. That worked. Nice. Okay. Now do upgrade. Wait, it's just the wrong command. Uh, up, update. Reinstalled. Excellent. I think. I think that means it worked as it should. <laughs> Not really sure, to be honest. I think it's fine. I think this does what it's supposed to do. Ugh. It's been such a long while since I was really immersed in the .NET ecosystem that I honestly can't remember if this is how it's supposed to work, but I think it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to commit this. I'm going to um, specify .NET Core. 3.1 .NET 5 and .NET 6 as target frameworks. Frameworks. We're gonna commit that. We're gonna run the tests just to see if they still work with the new version of .NET. Inconclusive. Well, that is interesting. Test not run. Last runner error. Uh, test runner is actually a process. With the code 150. I hope it's back to frameworks. Oh, oh, this targets the wrong version, I guess. Right, it says uh, core app 3 right there. Oh, sorry. Um. We're just gonna do 6.0 here because we're really uh, not, gonna, not gonna bother with uh, older versions while developing. So let's run the tests again. Oh, okay, something's changed. Why are we not able to run? Uh, let's see, can I build? I can. Okay, can I run? Apparently now I can run. Oh, I probably had to restore or something. And this will work. Good enough for me. <laughs> um, sure, let's just amend the previous commit. And... Yeah, this is all done in a separate branch for some reason. Am I allowed to push the main branch in this repo? Have a look. Uh, version. See if there are any branch protections turned on. Uh, nope. And if I rem remember correctly, and we can do that if we have a look in here. And have a look at GitHub work. This one, yeah. So it, it triggers on pushes of of tags that starts with a dash v. Uh, it starts with a v. So considering that, we're just gonna go to master, merge that into master. Do a fast forward. Yep. We're gonna push. 
Excellent. Uh, then we're going to use the newly installed version tool that we got right here. Uh, actually, we're going to move into the source folder here, .NET version, and we're going to bump the major or minor. Good question. Should we maybe bump the major version for this? Yeah, because it's actually breaking because you need a new version of the tool chain. Yeah, we're going to do the major. So in theory, this should bump us to 2.0. Nice. Couldn't see that my tool was working. Arr, I forgot the prefix thingy, didn't I? Yes. Okay. Then we're going to do reset. <laughs> Uh, we're not going to keep any of the changes. Reset hard. We're going to delete the tag that we don't want. Uh, delete 2.0.0. Uh, delete tag. Then I'm going to do this another uh, one more time. But git version prefix. It's going to be a V. Nice. And if we now have a look in my handy dandy thingy. Yes, that works push that and then we're gonna have a look in set of actions look at this it's working <laughs> uh, oh, oh okay fancy oh no it's not working The current .NET SDK does not support targeting 3.1, either target 2.2 or lower, or use the .NET SDK version that supports .NET Core 3.1. What? <laughs> um, hmm. Do we do any... Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, we need to fix that too. Um, inside of the solution, let's add an existing item. Existing item. Uh, I think it is this. Yeah. I recently learned the, the shortcut for um, displaying hidden files in macOS, and I'm so happy. It's Command Shift. Uh, command shift uh, full stop. No, 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 that's not the way I would say it. Uh, command shift dot. <laughs> Enable to really load project and obtain part information from in this build, blah, blah, blah. That's probably fine. Uh, no? Oh, man, it didn't add the thing. Ah, that's fine. Oh, there we go. We'll just do it over here. This one. I'm just gonna assume that this still works. Uh, what did it say here? Okay, so I'm gonna do 6.0. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna try doing that. Um, then we're just gonna do a bit of a dirty hack here. Set back to the browser. Let's see. Uh, actions. Okay, it did push. It seems. Refre or, that's not refresh. That's refresh. Mm. Rerun. <laughs> Let's see. Set up job. It says don't like core. No, no, no. It's running the old thing. Okay. I, <laughs> I tried to cheat the system. It didn't work. 
Um, oh, no, 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 because it's probably still... Yeah, it is. Uh, right, right, right. So, how do I do this again? Can I... Can I just... Right, how do, I, how do I do this again? Can I do this maybe? Sure. And then like do a rebase on top of master? Is that a possibility? No, not really. Um, okay, so if we just do this, just remove this old one there. this instead. You tag. B2.0. Create tag. Can I then push to this? Does that work? No. Um, I probably need to delete the tag in GitHub 2. I don't think that's possible to do in here. Do this. Okay, that looks seems to work. So I do this, this. Oh, okay. That didn't. Okay, that didn't didn't do much. Let's try that again. There we go. Push. Oh, uh, yeah. Push. Does that trigger a new action? Yes, it does. Does it work though? Let's see. Uh, well, it says install. Oh crap! That crashed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the okay, it does not work. I would say that that's probably what I specified, wasn't it? Six point oh. I would have thought that worked. Is not the same as one point two. Interesting. Let's have a look in the actions repo though. Actions, GitHub, Actions. Isn't the that the, uh, yeah, sure. Let's just go here and do dot net. Set up dot net. With dot net version. Yeah, it, yeah. It does specify them in. Hmm. With .NET dash version, yeah. Okay, let's try to make it. Oh, because it's a, it's not a string, I guess. Sure, I can also specify that it's supposed to be six .NET. Okay, let's try that that instead. There we go. Uh, let's uh, just do the dirty trick again and amend that into the previous commit, like so. Oh, that's not how we do it. There we go. And we're going to remove this tag, delete to version 2 tag, delete. And then we're going to um, can I if I move this tag first, am I able to just This is an exercising exercise in seeing how much damage I can do with <laughs> git push force. Uh, did that work? <laughs> I don't think so. I need to delete the tag, I guess. In the remote repository first, then add it back in. This is such a dirty hack. It's almost embarrassing. It almost just almost. Uh, yeah, sure. Does that work? Okay, looks like it. Let's go back here. Have a look in actions. Yep. Generates in a build. <clears throat> Let's see if that works. Install.net. Yep. 
looks like that works too. Now for the exciting part. Good thing it um, <laughs> it doesn't show the NuGet API key. Okay. Ah, oh, come on, that was so close. Why though? Why did you stop? Uh, could not find part of the path. Okay. Successfully created package. Home runner work done a version done a version output done a version blah blah blah. Home runner work done a version done a version source. Dot net version, dot net version. Source of hardware, okay. So it specify a different path than what it's. Has this ever worked? Because it doesn't, it kind of looks wrong to me now. Doesn't it? Because you say that it's supposed to be output in the working directory. Then you try to push it from some other directory? Why? That doesn't look right. Hmm. That looks more right, doesn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's try that fix. <laughs> um. So we've ended up writing no code at all, I think. Nope. We've only <laughs> tried to make the build thing work uh, and uh, responded to issues with, we're not going to solve the problem for you. Uh, you're better off all on your own. Have a good day. <laughs> I just find it a bit funny. Every time I try to do .NET programming, I apparently, oh, that's not what I meant to do. I apparently end up um, just doing everything else than program in C Sharp and .NET. So let's see, does this generate a new build? Uh, no. Did I, did I push it? <clears throat> Oh, it pre oh, I forgot to do this. Then I did this. Go back here. Do this. Yeah, here we go. Okay, trying again. We're very close at this point. <clears throat> actually i have to uh, give them credit the, these actions are running pretty quickly i mean the, the you get a get an eight build engine pretty f it worked huzzah so in theory if we now go to nuget.org i think yes and search for .NET version. There it is. Wow, 3,000 downloads. That's more than I thought. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna assume that a lot of these are like CI builds that does this. Still. Uh, Okay, okay, Nuke. Oh, I, I don't even know about Nuke. I, I might have heard about it, maybe? Huh. All the way back in 2019. This tool is older than I thought it was. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to log in here uh, off screen and see if I remember how to get back in. Uh, sign in with Microsoft apparently. Um, yeah, which account is this? This one? 
Let's see what happens. Password. This one. Ugh. Nope. <laughs> not really. Oh, no, that's not the right one. This one, maybe. This one, it might be. Seems to be short. Oh, 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 like that. Okay. Let's do this one. Paste that in. Closure again, yes. I'm gonna have to click something here. Reject, reject, reject all the cookies, save changes. Okay, yeah. Uh, manage packages. No one listed, published. Don't know version. 2.0, oh, it looks like it's live. There we go, hey. It is live. <laughs> wow. Okay. We got it working. Uh, that's that's good. Pretty happy with that, actually. Let's tweet about this. <laughs> what do we do now? We tweet. Uh, new version of. Um, Uh, .NET version 2 is uh, now targeting um, new versions of .NET 2. Exclamation mark. Paste link. Boom. Okay, uh, wow, really? <laughs> um, apparently one of my packages has 26,000 downloads. What? Really? That is interesting. That is genuinely interesting. Huh. <laughs> I, I, wow, okay, I, I, I'm just surprised. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Contact owners. Shouldn't this show, like, didn't they show previously, like, in the sidebar here, didn't they show, like, the individual authors? Because one of the packages that I, um, that I own, there is another person that's like the the maintainer of it, basically. Shouldn't and they don't they don't show up in the sidebar. That's that's not fair. It looks like my, like that tool might actually go away. It's a way to download different SDK versions of the .NET SDKs, but it looks like they're gonna include it in the in the official .NET toolchain. Uh, or some version of it at least. So it looks like it's going to be obsolete in a very short while. But yeah, I think that's going to be it. Oh, I've been streaming for almost two hours. Nice. Uh, oh, it's getting late too. I should really get to bed. But yeah, we managed to get the new version out. It solves the problems that the people had. So we're actually going to just jump quickly into the issues here. And... A new version is now live with support for dot dot net four three point one dot net five dot oh five and dot net six. Hopes uh, 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 um, hope this solves the problem. Uh, Version works. I'm just gonna paste the link. <laughs> Close. Um, I should probably reference this in the in the issue. I forgot about that. Uh, well, I didn't really create an issue for it. So, yeah. Whatever. 
that's fine. Um, can I, can I, if I add reference a new issue? No, the other way around. Uh, ah, whatever. I'm going to leave it like that. That's exactly what I want to do, but sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think, um, I think that's going to be it. Uh, I didn't really get to write any C sharp code still, but I managed to fix the problem that I was uh, that I set out to fix, which is good. And I managed to get every, uh, get everything working, which was pretty easy uh, to be honest. Uh, thankfully, <laughs> could have gone could, could, it could have gone poorly. It didn't. So let's just be grateful for that. But yeah, uh, thank you for uh, sticking with me for these two hours. If you watched all the way through, I hope to see you next time. Snuggies.